Welcome to the Project Watch. This is Sir B. Now, today I'm going to be reviewing Umbre's crime plan. He laid out at the recently concluded 79th GLP rally. We're going to talk about it. We're going to examine it. And at the end of the video, we're going to also touch on the madness we are going with the Qatar World Cup with some of your favorite Western nations. Because you know my thing and work to this already. So, you are going to hear that at the end of the video. Before we touch on Umbre crime plan, we have a Patreon birthday shout out. This one goes out to Snooki and is coming straight from your future husband, Romain. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am Seso and I'm a future husband. So Snooki, hope you have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Every year is a blessing. And to a Romain and talk, let's just say, some very interesting things are in store for you to all know. So big up yourself, Snooki. Big up yourself, Romain. We can move into the video. Let we examine Umbre crime plan. I'm later out at the JLP rally we're going with you. I was watching for see what we're going because we already hear say him that will leave out some things right at the rally. Now in the midst of looking out for see what was said regarding the crime plan, of course social media was flooded with all kind of videos and things from the rally, people on their way to the rally. I mean I don't know I was sweet some people so about politics. We see people went up at JUTC bus and the bus I drive. We see coastal bus left right into the road, all kind of madness. Every time these rallies go on, I the same thing happening over and over. And when people like me talk about it, they hear them say, let people alone. Make people you are going like say, you are going like say. So as I'm telling all the time, I'm a dinosaur. So when time you see them things there, I think absolute madness. But clearly it's normal to know for only. So enjoy on yourself. So, we are going to go through this crime plan and PIA, Patreon Squad, more to tell me if some of these things sound familiar. Here is a direct quote. May I read this from the Observer. There are several loopholes in our system which we will be closing. We have been engaging with our US counterparts in discussion and further measures to stem the flow of illegal guns into Ironman. I have put to our US friends the need to require greater identification for persons sending packages to Ironman from the US. The fact that we need to talk about this is not 2022. The fact that 60 years, Jamaica, I mean 60 years since independence. Right? And it's at this point right? we have to say we need greater identification for persons sending packages to Ironman. And the reason why that's important is because when time them actually find the right, legal firearms, then them can start right at you send it off and you are responsible. So either you start talk or do some serious time. He goes on to state, we will also be opening discussions with our US friends to have special operations to target Jamaican dons overseas who are using their resources and influence to solicit and direct murders in Ireland. Interesting. The foreign done. But telling us that there can be no serious attempt to fight crime without addressing right, the people them who send weapons, money, all kind of things to fight gang war in Ireland. Mikey got to foreign, turn Al Capone, make a whole heap of money, and send in our own. Right. That individual, quote unquote, Mikey plays a major role in crime in Jamaica. There can be no crime plan without addressing Mikey. Now you see mentioned special operations to target them. That means that it's not just identifying them but actually going after them. The United States government right, have a team right, that work with JCF, them named JFAT. For them job is to capture all American criminals who are in Ironman. Therefore, it only makes sense that a similar team can be formed on the other side. So that's why right, they sound like a step in the right direction. These them say sound like it because remember this is just words. This is just talking. This is a political rally. Right? You know, politicians, if it's one thing we know them can do well, is talk. Right? So it sounds like this is a step in the right direction. If it actually get done, then it is a major step in the right direction. So I'm telling you already, the first time somebody is made an example 
that is going to make other people know say the days when time you can just drop a foreign and just start sending down BA gun and make BA people dead is over. The reason why people do it so much is because there's no precedent right, for them getting caught up in that. As long as them are foreign, them can't rain down all that and destruction anymore. The first man to get made an example, other people are going to sit up and take notice. The second, the third, the fourth, more people will say no, things different now. So the foreign done has to be addressed. So that right there so is the first tiki. Remember in a school and I get tiki and rang bang, that is the first big tiki. The foreign done, quote unquote Mikey, right? Afi, get stopped. Afi, be held accountable. Otherwise, you can steal a foreign right? and just recycle it. You can kill, kill them, you can lock them up, you just recycle another one because you have the money and the resources. You just keep sending them more. First tiki right there, so. He then went on to mention that it's not only criminals overseas right, who are programming crime and murders locally, but also individuals incarcerated in Ariman, as in, in other words, people without jail, who are conducting extortion operations and directed murders. Very interesting. In other words, the jail done. Just like with the foreign done, the jail down, sit down comfortably in his cell and say kill him, kill him, extort him, extort him. Nothing happens to the jail down. Listen to this. To counter that, he said that the government is designing a new high security prison. He mentioned that this high security facility will have a communications dead spot built into it. In other words, no signal can go out, no signal can come in. He says high risk criminals will be placed in that facility where they will not be able to influence crime and murders outside. This sound like one of them supermax the talk about. Now sat the gun talk about the Dixie Cup and the string. I wonder if it'll be a reality. I wonder if it's coming through a dead spot built into the facility. No signal in, no signal out. This prison is going to be for your favorite done. In the video recent video, talking about the corrupt ward of them and the overseer of them. People were saying, why not use cell phone jammers, cell phone jammers? Them have cell phone jammers. I was reliably informed that they did try and use cell phone jammers because they have them. But the problem was that the prison literally in a, some communities. So you take a place like GP. If you ever see GP, GP is literally in a Rayton. Like the road beside it, people live there. So when they were actually testing out the cell phone jamming technology, they realized that no matter how them adjust it, right, it was also jamming the signal of the residents them in a Rayton because the community is too close to the prison. The prison is literally on a street in the community. So residents were losing their cell phone signal. And of course, you know that guy already, then eventually have to stop using the cell phone jamming technology. That is why this prison has to be away from communities. But listen to this part. He mentioned say, the technology can only guarantee security to a point, noting that if the people charged with guarding the convicts collaborate with them, then the problem will still exist. Of course, you can go for all technology you want, right? but people will always find a way to beat it if the people them corrupt. Now, listen to this part. He said, We have had issues of the personnel guarding our prisons, cooperating with the criminals to give them phones and other communication devices. Right? So, as you know, I just a couple of days ago, we talked about this. So this got my attention immediately when time I see it because I want to see how the mother address it. Listen up closely. That problem he said is going to be addressed by a new corrections bill. This is a major ticky. Go back go listen to the video. Just a couple days ago I do it. I tell him to say even though the corrections act was updated in 2021, it needs 
more work. When I said that, another one of these very educated people tell me how much experience them have in that this field and them lecture over here and them lecture over here. So tell me, say, the Corrections Act was just updated in 2021 and there'll be no need to update it again. So all these experts and lawyers and legislators update the law in 2021 so i don't know why you think you need to state that it need more well guess what the prime minister just said it need more i'm looking at the observer and it says let me repeat it the problem is going to be addressed by a new corrections bill that proposes stiffer custodial penalties for people uh oh Cost, in other words, go jail for people who are charged with the responsibility of securing criminals and preventing them from having access to the outside world but are facilitating the convicts. In other words, the warder, right, you know, the, the overseers, people who run the prison. The bill need more work. It needed to be updated again. It never went far enough. It was too basic. The way all the Corrections Act was set up, right, the warden them themselves could have skirted around it by just not enforcing the law. But now, by updating it, where even them are going get sink. This Corrections Act will be complete and then we will have the trifecta. The trifecta I've been talking about from Wapi, even think about for Kill Pillow. Firearms Act, Bail Act and the Corrections Act. So, so far, it sounds like we're about to take a step in the right direction. Again, emphasize sound like. This piece of the matter about how long is it going to take for me? This is the problem I have with this crime plan so far. It must say the right things, but we need a deadline. To really hold them accountable. When is this prison going to be made? This update to the Corrections Act, when is it going to be updated? Because we know that politicians can update acts fast. When they're serious, they can update laws very fast. It's all about motivation. So, Mr. Prime Minister, it would have been great if we did hear some kind of timeline. We're going to update the Corrections Act by January. 2023 the latest and the new prison will be built right, by X amount of time. The fact that it's kind of open-ended, we have to say who knows and who knows is not good enough. Who knows is not good enough when Jamaica has fallen behind El Salvador right, in the acidic murder race. El Salvador is very likely to hit under a thousand murders. Iron Man already reached well over a thousand. So we don't have time. We don't have we'll see. We don't have when we get round to it. We don't have we're going to. We need things done. When we can act fast. We know that. See that you can't do it. I don't want to do it. Now, he goes on to mention the strategy of the police and the military will change. Taking the firearm Discovering it without finding the person who brought it in or who is using it is not enough. We are going to be conducting searches. We want to find the people who are importing, the people who are distributing, the people who are shooting the firearms. We want to lock you up for good. The police are intensifying their search. In other words, it's not just about finding gun and posting gun pan IG and see if we find one gun. Or even just saying, here's my 87. But the network, right, the machine has to be disruptive. That is why you see importing, distributing. That's why they involve people who are bigger than the 87 octane. I'm telling you, say, the 87s don't operate in a vacuum. They are the last piece of the acidic deadly puzzle. And them shoot and kill the smuddy. But to get to that point, there is a number of steps. A number of people involved. So when you talk about importing and distributing, you talk about people who are bigger than the 87th. And unless you address them, 
unless you deal with the network, unless you deal with the people who have the kind of power and influence to make people have customs turn the next way, or make this big wig, right, lock them eye, then we're going to be like a dog chasing its own tail. You have to disrupt the network. You have to disrupt the network, and the network involves big wigs. The network that allows the machine right, to flood the streets of Ironman, we know say it involves right, people who are not actually shooting the guns themselves. Because we know say no matter how much Ajis or Dogpa or JJ Nakis love gun and love war and love shoot people, they cannot make nobody do a customs look the next way. That part is much bigger than them. And unless them people right, get targeted as well, then as me say, it's going to be like a dog chasing its own tail. Won't be going very far. So when I take the things that I'm saying at the speech and then combine it with the things that were already, like the updated firearms act, right? Them said the bail act is soon done. It sounds like we're moving in the right direction. He's saying all the right things, but again, remember the word saying, right? Sound like. We need to see action. We need to actually see this taking place. Because unless people actually see it working, nobody will take it serious, including the people them who are doing the things them themselves. The people them who are send gun, distribute gun, right, the 87, the 90, the 116. All of this is just noise until they actually see it at work. But no fight things I'm gonna talk about, the foreign done, the jail done. These are things where enough people is overlook. When people start about crime, then we should just start about crime like you know you have the local done from the corner and you have the, the shooter them and we tell them say it's bigger than that. All the videos I've seen over the years, talking about Brebre or even bird brain and them people, is to get the government right actually bring in legislation that can do something about it. The police can only enforce laws that exist. No matter how much them know, say Brebre that jail and make a phone call, no matter how much they take a phone from Brebre, if there is no serious legislation to actually right, do anything more than a slap on the wrist, then it's going to continue. If people like Bird Brain right, know, say, well, as long as my dad find me alright, then it's going to continue. I just start about things because I enjoy making YouTube videos. We want to see actual progress. We talk about the jail done because we want to see the correction act updated. We talk about the foreign done because we want to see them right, actually go after them. The PIA movement, when it first started out, this is what it was all about. You know, people ask me at the time, right, don't you get this out in one time you make a hundred videos about Brebe when you realize that him still and right, get sentenced. This is not about sentencing no one man. Brebre take advantage of a loophole that exists. This is not about any one man getting sentenced. This is about fundamentally fixing a flawed system. That way, there won't be as many Brebres. Brebre is a criminal. He takes advantage of a system that exists. He takes advantage of a loophole that exists. So this is not just about Brebre or any other jail done. This is about putting pressure on the powers that be to fix the loophole them. And that way we will have less Brebre and less people getting them house burned down. And less people being extorted by criminals in prison and having people getting killed and the orders of dons with our prison. So when we see make video talking about this and that dan, right? you think says about the dan. You think say it might even be a personal thing, I'm not like him, I'm not like him. But in reality, this is all about your favorite leaders. And them really want to see. Say, so look how to make this done, I do this. Right? I want to claim so a leader, I only can change it and not change it. But only the real PIA understand this, or even care if you understand this. Remember, no people you see over here, they were the same Vulture Squad who were trying to help cancel the movement right, in summer 2020. It was after them and them favorite YouTubers, artists, right, you know, celebs, influencers failed. Then they adapted the mindset, if you can't beat them, join them. Right? But don't get it twisted. Now for the same people may say, well, I thought about Sir P, this Sir P, that they were the same people who were in Volta Squad in 2020. Right? It's just that they're surprised that the movement is not only still around, but far stronger than it was then. So now, them try to attach themselves to it. 
So for the people them that the PIA and Patreon squad, I know it can be very frustrating. I know it's easy if you give up on Ironman, but you have to stay in the fight. As long as you keep up the pressure, then slowly it will change. We're getting there. We're getting there slowly, but we have to hold them accountable. We have to hold them right, to them word. I make sure if we remind them, say, it is said this. And don't think this is back in the day when you can do the same thing you want to say and then don't follow through. Them days are done. Now, before I finish the video, I want to briefly touch on what I want with the World Cup. I just want to commend the host nation for holding them turf, standing them ground. This attempt by a group of Western nations to try and pontificate right, to the host nation, the virtue signal to you know, demonstrate just how self-righteous they are has backfired in spectacular fashion. The host nation hold them ground. They did not budge an inch. And now we say uh, people are cancelling quote unquote. You know, uh, protests are cancelled. Right? You know, the, the, the message they were going to send. So now I'm wondering what kind of justice warriors are these? You were going to make a statement about what you truly believe in and when you look at turn off, you never believe in nothing from morning. This was about virtue signaling. This was about activism. And I commend the host nation for standing them ground. You are in the people them country. You know what they're about before they were even awarded the World Cup. Everybody know what Qatar is about. This is not a secret. Right? Everybody knows it's a Muslim nation and them don't deal with this and them don't deal with that. And everybody was quiet for years and then as soon as World Cup has started, people want to get woke and want to go, you know, a special armband. Mr. People have said they're, they're also standing up for the exploitation of workers. Cut the crap. The idea of Western nations, West European and North American nations, lecturing the world and exploiting people. Europe and North America are lecturing Qatar on exploiting people. The, the, the reason why they're going to the reason why they're upset with Qatar is because they exploit people. The Western world is preaching to people about taking advantage of people. Even Hollywood can make this up. We want to see football. We want to see countries play ball and enjoy sports. If I want to hear political commentary, if I want to hear social commentary, I'm going to watch news or I'm going to watch YouTube videos. When I World Cup time, a ball more I see. Football more, country versus country. All of a sudden, players are being tasked to be some kind of social justice warriors to push all kind of agendas. Cut the crap. If you're that upset, don't perform. Don't take part. Give up your spot and make some deals go. In the days of apartheid, if South Africa was awarded a World Cup, you cannot give me a free ticket. The greatest message you can send is to not participate. That is bigger than any t-shirt or any armband. It would be stupid for me to buy a ticket, go to South Africa, support South Africa, apartheid South Africa, and while I'm in South Africa, walk around with a stupid armband for me on, talking about I'm standing up to South Africa, when time I don't give them money already, and support them already, financially, which is the biggest support they can give somebody. Cut the crap. Well done to the host nation. This is Western activism. Right, and it's backfired spectacularly. This is Western activism and Western hypocrisy. Cut it out. We don't believe you. Now, let's enjoy the World Cup. With that said, let me know in the comment section which team I bring. I imagine it's mostly Brazil or Argentina, as usual. Anyway, Patreon squad, big up on yourself. Yeah, yeah, you don't know more life. Walter squad, see you circling. Bless.